Welcome back to the final session of the afternoon. Um, so our speaker is uh, Luca Fresta from Bonn, uh, who will be speaking to us about the forward-backward STE for uh, subcritical Grassmann measures. Thank you, and uh, thank, I wanted to thank the organizers for this opportunity. It's very nice to be here. Uh, and I also like the idea of having this uh, concatenated uh, workshop with uh, also because I'm a physicist. Uh, today, Francesco already gave an introduction to what uh, Grossman measures are, but it's the last talk, so I think it's, uh, it's also good to um, repeat concepts and also give some further motivation. So they might look like a, a weird object, but they actually appear, as uh, Francesco was saying, uh, a Euclidean quantum field theory. Um, and some relevant models would be the uh, Yukawa model, uh, the gross nouveau model, or also QED. Uh, but they appear in other fields, uh, like in uh, statistical mechanics, uh, in uh, as emergent effective field theories for um, reason like models and others. Uh, they also appear in condensed metal physics, so in the theory of metals, um, and in general in the description uh, of the uh, grand canonical ensemble for electrons moving in a crystal. Um, but they also appear in uh, oscillatory supersymmetric field theories uh, connected with uh, random matrices or uh, some um, particular random walks. And um, actually for me, this was uh, one of the starting point as a, as a motivation. Um, so there is a, a lot of literature on these topics. Um, but so the great majority uh, of the literature is about this uh, uh, be raised in integral probably after the sum of uh, negative papers uh, in the seventies by Fröhlich and Osterwaldo. Um, but for us, so the scope of our work, uh, which is ongoing, is to um, uh, so unfold a uh, stochastic analytic approach to this theory, and uh, so we hope to be contagious. Probably the contagious has already happened. Um, and the goal of my talk um, is to to exhibit uh, a synergy uh, between stochastic analysis. Um, in the form of this uh, SDE and uh, uh, the renormalization group in the form of the Polchinski flow equations. Um, plan. Uh, so I'm going to uh, recall the setting, which was already introduced by Francesco and present the main result. Uh, then I'm going to introduce the stochastic quantization approach, which is not what we've seen so far, uh, namely the Langevin dynamics, but something that I'm going to call scale uh, stochastic quantization. And finally, I'm going to say how one can play around with low equations together with this uh, forward backwards stochastic. Um, uh, differential equation. Uh, so Grassmann measures are, are associated with these uh, Grassmann variables, which are non-commutative objects and um, in a sense of the simplest one. But to describe these objects, uh, so we work in a non-commutative probability space. Uh, so consisting of a system, so M being a sister algebra of operators uh, acting on a Hilbert space and omega being a state uh, on M, so which means is a, a normalized um, positive uh, linear functional. Um, yeah. And the measures we want to describe are uh, perturbations of Gaussians. And Gaussians, so Gaussians, Gaussian measures, so are associated with, um, so Gaussian free field, or in this case, um, Grassmann Gaussian free field, 
Uh, so let um, so let phi be a Grassmann Gaussian free field. Probably have to flip this up. Um, with variance um, so on L2 on this Hilbert space um, so that I'm, I'm going to write Uh, where D is the dimension, uh, gamma is going to be chosen uh, smaller than D over four for having subcriticality. And yeah, so I've set the mass to one for simplicity. Uh, so this is the covariance. And what does the what does it mean to be Grassmann? Uh, so it means that uh, we have this constraint. Uh, and so Gaussians, yeah, so it means that the cumulant, uh, so defined with this uh, anti-symmetric constraints are, are zero, but the second one, and in particular, so under omega, we have that. Um, so we just would call it J. Um, yeah. So it's not just G because of this uh, anti-communitivity. So what I'm making a choice here, which is typical uh, also in physics. So one needs um, this conjugation um, on the Hilbert space that it's sending. So here now I'm using this uh, convention and U is just uh, this unitary, so. So this, are, this is our basic object, and from this we want to um, describe um, weak perturbation, so perturbation of Gaussians uh, via the Gibbs prescription. Uh, but to do so, we put cutoffs. Yeah, yeah, sorry, thank you. Thanks. Um, so we put cutoffs. Um, um, and we work on a toroidal lattice. Yeah. Uh, and I, let me denote the, um, the corresponding Grassmann Gaussian free field and this toroidal lattice with uh, with covariance um, regularized. So you can think of the Laplacian on um, regularized Laplacian. And the the measure we are inter we 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 worked on is uh, is the following. So is this uh, weak star limit? Where V is just the typical, um, so we're so putting some notation um, uh, with respect to the usual uh, physics notations. This is a little bit compact, so you know you kind of have to double um, the variables that you have. So let me do it as a physicist would do. Uh, um, uh, so this is probably this one. Um, and this is probably, yeah. Uh, so with this notation, V is just a typical, um, uh, yeah, so now I'm,
So it's a typical quartic perturbation. Um, some comments. Sorry? This is question so the fiber and fire my familiar. Fiber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, fiber X, phi X, fiber X, phi X, the particle. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it's uh here I'm denoting it's spinful, right? It's C2. Is this your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is why I'm putting spin up and spin down. Yeah, yeah. Sure, but thanks for the question. So, yeah, so you need some internal degrees of freedom, otherwise this is zero. Uh, but some remarks. Uh, so I've, been, I've talked about some uh, Euclidean quantum field theories like the Yukawa model, the Grosseville model. This is nothing like that in particular. I mean, uh, I'm not taking the Dirac operators or anything, but this is in fact just a toy model uh, because our scope was uh, methodological. So this is a toy model for uh, UV subcritical theory. So in UV, well, it's because uh, we have a divergence on the diagonal. Um, which makes this perturbation ill-defined if I'm taking the epsilon to zero limit, even though lambda is small. And it's a critical because of my choice of the covariance with these parameters, in fact. So one can, one can see that my G, G, GFF, um, so it's scale invariance with dimension gamma, in particular, uh, following, uh, so answering a question uh, by AJ. So this object, look, so when I look at phi of x, this object is, uh, is so um, this is the norm in the sister algebra. So this object is, um, so if I put uh, my epsilon, this is diverging as epsilon to the minus gamma. Uh, but anyways, it's a critical uh, in this, um, Regime where this is the dimension for because of it's a it's a full order polynomial, and the other comment again so the covariance maybe it's not local like it's not just a Laplacian but you know instead of playing around with fractional dimension as it's, uh, it's often done in the physics literature this is more convenient and it's also done by other people so just fractional Laplacian, um, yeah so those are the comments I wanted to give. Uh, and let me state the, the result. So, so then there exists lambda naught, uh, depending on d and gamma, such and a function mu epsilon lambda, such that if um, lambda is smaller than lambda naught, we have existence. Uh, so these, uh, let me call omega v l epsilon the right hand side here. Uh, so they exist, and they have this limit uh, as um, as epsilon goes to zero and l to infinity. And furthermore, we prove some properties of this uh, limiting object uh, uh, clustering. Uh, so let me denote by co covariance of a linear functional A and B, just the expectation of A times B minus. And what we prove is that for any F1 and F2 in L2, uh, uh, then we also need some uh, uh, regularity. So for any such functions, we can bound the covariance of this guy here. Um, yeah. So this is bounded. Um, yeah. 
where you can see some constant and D I is just the support for my function. Uh, yeah, some comparison with the literature. So here would be a huge list. Um, as I was mentioning beforehand, so on those models I mentioned, there has been a lot of work like by Gavetsky Kupianen, um, by um, Feldman, uh, Magnon, Riverso, Senor, uh, by uh, Losniewski, uh, more recently also by DMARC in QED, um, and also by Mastro Pietro, and uh, for the electroweak and effective electroweak theory. Uh, but more generally, in like also statistical mechanics or condensed metaphysics uh, by the Roman school, so Galavatti, Benfatto, Mastro Pietro, Giuliani, but also um, in the uh, Rivaso school, Disertori Rivasori. So there are a lot of results. Uh, and these results are all based on this uh, B resin integral. Um, at the same time, um, so I should mention that, so besides the pioneering work by uh, Kalim and Jaffe and um, yeah, Ostavada, uh, only recently this uh, stochastic analytic approach was uh, was um, revived. And uh, let me mention the work by Alberverio, uh, Borazzi, De Vecchi, Gubinelli, um, and also the work by Chandra, Hira, Kiev, um, and the other work that was mentioning by, mentioned by Francesco today, which is, um, yeah, in collaboration also with, uh, with Marsha. Yeah. So this was uh, all I wanted to say for the first part. Let me move to what our stochastic quantization tool is. Um, so the idea, uh, something that is already present in the optimal control approach by Baraskov Gubinelli, but it's also an idea which is, uh, which is coming from physics. Um, but in this case, so what we do is uh, we interpolate uh, the law of our GFF with the so law of psi with a uh, Brownian martingale. So the Brownian martingale is with respect to an extra parameter t. It's not a time, as in the Langevin dynamics, it's a multi-scale parameter. And so to do so, we work in a filtered uh, non-commutative probability space, uh, which consists furthermore of a um, filtration of uh, sister algebras. So filtration of sister algebra, which means uh, F uh, T's. Uh, and we assume that there exists a conditional expectation, which is a normal one projection. So in here in this context, for me, it's just, uh, so it's a normal one projection satisfying um, uh, sorry. And Uh, so you feel about notation. So uh, omega could be thought of the expectation. And so omega of t, uh, you can think of this as um, so uh, as just, um, okay. Uh, once we have this, 
So we can introduce uh, Grassmann, uh, Brownian Martingale as the adapted uh, process. So here are everything. So I'm going to write in the Ilver space H, but you should think of it possibly with uh, L and epsilon, so with the cutoffs. Um, yeah. And so uh, introducing the interpolation G of T. Well, I'll take your favorite interpolation. Um, uh, so let's uh, chi be a uh, synfinity compactly supported function in such a way that this is really going up to the scale uh, to the to the t. Um, and so uh, x of t uh, is a Grassmann uh, Gaussian process. So in particular, yeah, we have anti-commutations and all of that. And it's Gaussian and uh, it's a Martingale. And furthermore, as Francesco was saying today, uh, so we need some uh, condition on the norms and the the natural requirements that one one want, and you can this is natural if you think that this comes from white noise uh, would be uh, to have something like this. Uh, uh, T to infinity, T to infinity. It's, it's, sorry, what I'm interested in is T to infinity, which is UV. Uh, yeah, yeah. So now I'm a little bit imprecise, so we don't have a, uh, an infrared problem. Uh, we can do something, you know, I could the T minus infinity, which would be UV, uh, infrared. We, we don't need to be so precise, one can squeeze it and, uh, you know. And you don't need an interpolation there. So let me just say this is the interpolation you want at uh, large t. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So once we have this object, um, uh, so let me give an example. So this may be abstract, but this was uh, uh, already done uh, in some sense by Ostavada Schrader. Uh, so the Ostavada construction would be. Uh, take this Hilbert space, L2. So this was already mentioned by Francesco. Uh, and take M of T to be the car uh, generated by H of T. And omega, it's the vacuum expectation uh, in the Fermioni Fox space. Uh, which is just uh, uh, yeah, and uh, in this setting, you can define object like this. So I'm gonna denote the uh, creation operator in this box space by a uh, joint. Uh, here there should be um, g times f plus. Uh, yeah, so this is an explicit example, and you can verify. Now, in this case, it's Brownian motion, so the uh, you would get that the covariance is like uh, uh, the minimum between T and S times, in this case, G, sorry, uh, times G squared. Okay, so let me put a... But this is a simple example. Uh, yeah, so you can have this abstract characterization, but at the end of the day, things are uh, written explicitly. And the stochastic quantization tool So this is for so L and absolute infinite. So for any nice function, nice enough function uh, P. Uh, so we have that 
um, our P of X is equal to this. So this is capital Psi, uh, where, so this capital Psi is like the interacting process and solves um, on zero infinity, uh, solves uh, Uh, this is a functional uh, derivative. Um, yeah. Uh, the remarks. Sorry. The yeah. yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, because this is the force, the force is the derivative of the potential. I'm going to comment on that, thanks. Uh, so some remarks. Uh, yeah, so yeah, the proof is based uh, based on averaged Ito formula. I mean, in fact, we have uh, so average, and so we didn't need to prove a Nito formula for this purpose. Um, and the other comment is that, so this would be the, I mean, all, there is also a forward backward as the lurking behind the optimal control, control approach by uh, Baraskov and Gubinelli. So you can think of this as the fermionic version of that. And this structure, so not just the optimal control structure, this structure can, would carry over also to this non-commutative setting. Um, yeah. Yeah, so in the last 20 minutes, let me finally get to the point, right? I, I do, uh, I have 20 minutes, right? Cool. Um, and flow equations. And I hope this is really a bridge uh, between um, the um, mathematicians and physicists in the audience. Um, yeah, so the question uh, that I want to answer is how do uh, do flow equations uh, help us control this uh, forward backward SD? Well, the strategy is as follows. So the big problem here, so is that we're taking the force, but we're taking it at the solution. Uh, so if you're working on the interval zero T, this would be T or, yeah. So at the extreme point, and this is a little bit inconvenient, but the natural thing to do is, okay, to interpolate this. So introduce a family, uh, differentiable uh, such that um, uh, basically uh, let me yeah so this would define this is a definition for R of T. You can think of this as a remainder process. So the idea is, okay, you have this force. You don't know exactly what it is, but suppose you have a, a good guess, which is this F, and then we're gonna see what equation F should solve. And yeah, you have this guess, but possibly you make a, you have a remainder. Um, and the you also need to have this, um, boundary condition. And yeah, you, you play around with the Ito formula. Again, average Ito formula.
And then you obtain an equation for um, your remainder. Uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe G, G, oh, sorry. So whenever I write f of s, I mean f of s of psi of s. Um, so this is the equation we get, so for uh, the process uh, psi and for the remainder. Uh, and this is the source, and the source is just defined as um, or now this is the functional Laplacian, sorry. My problem is the nine S. So this is the structure that we get. Why is this useful? Well, this contains uh, the typical strategies that are used uh, with flow equations. Um, and the strategy number one would be uh, to actually take F of S to be D, of uh, V, I'm oh, sorry, maybe call it out. Where V of T solves the Polchinski equation, yeah? So it's really the effective potential that is usually studied in physics. Um, I think it's... Uh, And if you do so, well, this is the this would be exactly the equation uh, for the derivative of v, which means q of s is zero, but q of s is the source, which means the remainder is, is zero. Uh, another typical approach, so to say, uh, would be the uh, Vic uh, renormalization. So one take S, sorry, F of S to be just uh, the solution of the linear part. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, so this is, these are two examples. In the first example, you basically uh, solve a very complicated equation and in a sense you have all the terms uh, contributing to the effective potential. And in the, other, in the other case, you have a very simple linear equation. You just have a polynomial. And yeah, general possible strategy would be to find an n-polynomial approximation of the Polchinski equation. So this means one seeks for uh, solutions of this form. So let's say up to uh, a polynomial of degree n. Yeah. And then uh, to project this equation and then to seek a solution of f of t. So the nonlinearity would produce higher order terms. So we just uh, ignore whatever is a uh, higher order. So we project in lower orders. So this means that the source term for R, R is, uh, is just a projection on whatever is bigger.
So in a sense, the strategy is, uh, is really an interpolation and uh, it's, some, it's somewhat uh, is reminiscent of also what happens uh, like in the theory of regularity structures or in the power controlled approach, uh, because the closer you get to criticality, uh, the more terms you have to uh, keep track of. This is a little bit of a different story, but still, it's like, okay, in principle, there is this Polchinski equation. You don't want to fully solve it, but you know, if you get cr close to criticality, the idea is that you might want to, to get some uh, polynom larger polynomial approximation of this equation. And yeah, in fact, uh, I have 10 minutes. Uh, it's just because uh, by tuning tuning gamma, you mean the covariance one minus. Yeah, yeah, here, here, no, no, here, yeah. everything is, oh, yes, you're right. Let's say what I said in the first part to state the main result was specifically that G in such a way that you choose gamma, that the gamma that I gave you that was the subcritical case, but whatever I'm saying here does not require that. I mean, also in this equation that I'm writing, uh, my stochastic quantization theorem was a, for a finite dimensional Hilbert space. So it means that with cutoffs, and so you understand we're not really requiring G to be anything. I mean, this is a toolbox you can apply it's not, it doesn't have to be with that G in particular. Uh, but yeah, so um, maybe some remarks, I'm not gonna enter the details of the computation. So this is really close to what physicists do, but it's a little bit easier. And in doing this, we got inspiration from uh, Duke. Um, uh, I think, uh, yeah. We also applied uh, flow equations to, to solve the um, some stochastic uh, PDEs, uh, uh, but also from um, uh, Giuliani, Mastro Pietro Rich, Richkov, um, uh, where they discuss in a very pedagogical way uh, the flow equations for fermions. And let me also mention a recent paper by uh, Massimiliano and uh, Rinaldi, so this is 23, where they also kind of consider the full subcritical regime and the applied flow equations to study. So Aladuk uh, to study some SPDs. Uh, yeah, so then the strategies uh, first to control, uh, control the flow of F. It's not that easy, but the nice thing is that it's a polynomial, so it can you can even build a triangular system to solve it. And this is uh, again inspired by what physicists do, but it's a little bit easier, and it's done in this continuous fashion, so you don't need any cluster expansion, any um, determinant expansion. But what's really needed, and it's lurking in, in, behind everything, is that you know these variables are bounded as long as t is finite. So you, everything is sort of bounded. So there is a natural topology to control things. Um, uh, but to, for the control of f, we don't even need any smallness parameter at this point. Okay. So in a sense, this comes from being subcritical. Uh, once we have the control of f. And one can say many things about this, uh, these um, approximation of the uh, effective potential. Uh, we just close the argument uh, by a fixed point. Uh, um, yeah, by fixed point for this equation. And that's where the smallness enters. So I then study the equation for psi t r of t uh, by a fixed point. And um, in this sense, once requires that. So for any, uh, sorry, for any gamma smaller than D over four, there exists an N depending on gamma. And this N is diverging as gamma goes to the critical dimension. And then given N, there exists lambda depending on this N as well. And for lamb small lambda, we can close the fixed point argument. Uh, maybe to conclude in the last uh, few minutes, 
Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, to conclude, so this would be about the existence. Um, so how do we prove clustering? Um, so we implement a method, a coupling method, which was already uh, used by Funaki maybe in the uh, 80s. I don't remember exactly. Uh, and the idea is, okay, we have this, uh, let's say, this two function, F1 and F2. Uh, and let's say that the support of F1 is here, the support of F2 is here. So what we, we do, we, we seek for some uh, domains. And in a sense, so we couple three solutions. One solution would be the full solution, and that we introduced, uh, let's say, white noise in this area, independently from this uh, area here, and also another white noise here. Um, and then we, so we're injecting independent uh, um, things, and so basically, uh, you can think of um, this is basically. I mean, it's not exactly like you can think of this this way. And as an effect, we are producing, so our Brown and Martingale here. Uh, so we produce a Brown and Martingale here and a Brown and Martingale here. And everywhere there is the, the right Brown and Martingale, which is driving our uh, forward backwards SD. But the nice thing about this is that they are independent. And anyway, and basically they're they're providing a good approximation of the the full solution in this regime. Why is that? Because you know the basically uh, the further these domains are, the larger this uh, balls could be. And if you are far from this boundary, basically the approximation is better because the covariance is decaying exponentially. So this is the idea. So we're coupling. And we are providing a good approximation in, a, in this region. And thanks to the um, exponential decay of the covariance, uh, basically this approximation is better and better. And then one can measure the, um, the size of the covariance in terms of um, how well uh, this is approximating uh, the solution with some exponential weight. Let's say um, if I call this, uh, this would be D1. Let me call this math call D1, D2, math call D2. But uh, this would be um, uh, so, and uh, yeah, and this is how we get our result on the clustering properties. Ping time is basically up. Um, and this is what I wanted to say. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.